So one of the coolest things that Ori and I developed when we worked together at Less Doing was this idea of a voice print. We had so many clients come to us and say, you know, I send out uh, stuff for writers to write for me and it comes back and it never sounds like me. Like, how do you guys do it? And we Ari always used to say to them, well, what do you sound like? And it was a little bit scary that no one could define for us in simple terms what their voice was, what their authentic voice was. So we developed something called the voice, which is an exploration to find your voice and then grow your business. So the first thing you have to ask yourself when you're going on this exploration is what kind of creator are you? Everyone says, just be authentic and resonate with the audience and be a storyteller and don't try to be something you're not. And you hear all these things, you see all these things online, but I mean, how do you actually do that? I, I, I've yet to find anyone aside from Ori Meisner and me who can tell you exactly how to do that. So that's what this is about. First thing you have to ask yourself is who are you? What kind of creator are you? Do you like to talk? Do you like to write? Are you a visual person who's constantly taking screenshots of things? All of these things will inform the kind of content you create and where that content ultimately winds up. So take a moment and just think about how you enjoy communicating. This will all inform where everything goes. If you are a visual person, your content will probably wind up best suited in a place like Meta or Pinterest. If you love to write like I do, your stuff will wind up on Medium or Substack. If you're verbal, if you just love to talk, think about the platforms of TikTok and YouTube as the place where your creations will be the best received because you will be the best you on those platforms. So let's get into the voice print. It's a pretty simple exercise and it's usually uh, best to do with two people, but let's start with the beginning. How we structured it was pretty much just like uh, English Comp 101, where you went through sort of the literary constructs of you know, Silas Marner or another painful, painfully dull uh, piece of literature that you didn't want to read, but you had to come up with the themes of the piece and the characters of the piece and the intention of the piece. And this is how we developed the voice print. So basically, I want you to think about your personal values. What is most important to you? What are your themes as a human? Um, if I had to say it, what mine were, it would be compassion and social justice. Um, those are the things that, that, that fuel me. Um, so we take that first. Then we think of our audience to who am I writing? Who are these people out here? Who do I want to talk to? Do I want to talk to kids? Do I want to talk to teenagers? Do I want to talk to business owners? Well, who is this message for? Because it doesn't matter how I feel about everything. It matters if it's going to also resonate with my audience. So whenever you're constructing this idea of creating something in your own voice, try to have a bigger vision for it. Try to think of it as your own personal creator mission statement. And use this very simple sentence uh, to construct that. I will, insert verb, buy insert another verb, hopefully in gerund, and then because there has to be a reason. And please don't have the reason be because I want to make a lot of money. That would be, yes, this is why we're in business. Yes, this is what we do, but that can't simply be the vision. Otherwise, uh, you will only come across as someone who's constantly trying to sell something. And, and uh, the world is so sophisticated now uh, that your approach will simply be repellent. Um, next, you want to talk about your intent. There's really three intents, three intentions when it comes to any piece of uh, creative content. It's to persuade someone, to inform someone, or to entertain someone. And, and please don't discount the notion of entertainment. Um, it's not, um, not entertainment at the expense of someone else, but the fact that uh, the, the joyful nature of your personality can come across in a way 
that is a, a very attractive when it comes to creating content. And then I need you to think about the mood. This, in general, how do you want people to feel? What kind of, if, how evocative is this going to be? And think of those those words that I put down on there and think of if if those words make you go, oh God, no. Or if those words go, yes, yes, that sounds like me. And then circle them. And then the tone is, this is sort of a two-person part, which is the part I like the most. Um, because think about how you come across as a communicator. Now I want you to think, will your audience agree? Like, I might think I have like the a solid five minute set of really funny stories. Um, and I would tell if I tell them to my 23 year old son, he will look at me stone faced because he does not agree that his mother has any comedic chops whatsoever that have any, you know, resonance with anyone under the age of 60. So I need to know where my sweet spot is. I need to know not only how I want to come across but how the audience is responding. So have someone also go through these words and see whether they feel that you are in your delivery. Maybe you think you're like crisp and sharp and fabulous. Did they circle crisp? Maybe not. So come together on three or four of these and that is your sweet spot for communication. Your intent and how it is received, and there you can uh, you can make really, really good content if you can marry those two together. So now we have this really cool exercise. And now what we do, thank you, chat GPT, is we can take this whole uh, portfolio of literary terms and intentions, and we can make this be part of the prompt that we give to ChatGPT. So let's say I want to create an article about coaching T-ball and the problems that I've had associated with teaching Double Day's greatest game to four and five-year-olds. But I don't want to write it from scratch. I would like to get a really good first draft from ChatGPT. So I go... And I put all the things that I've constructed about myself, my personality, my tone, all of this. And I bring all those words and I bring them all over to ChatGP and I ask them to construct a 500 word blog post about coaching T-ball to four and five year olds for someone who has never done it before with the following blah, 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 and drop it into ChatGPT and see what you get in return and see if it sounds close to how you want to communicate. Now you have a first draft. And for any writer, the first draft is the hardest thing to get. So um, I use it all the time for first drafts for everybody that I write with because it saves me an enormous amount of time. Now I have something I can work off of. Now I have something I can tweak and craft and mold and make into something based entirely on uh, the authentic voice of the person I'm writing for. Um, and I can build it up and turn it into a, you know, a more than workable uh, piece of content. 